Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our panel about German universities today. My name is Jana, and I'm very excited to be moderating the panel. Um, I'm a current second year student at the University of Birmingham, and I'm studying education. And for everyone tuning into Millie for the first time, um, we're a company that are dedicated to building a global community for international students, which is why we host these panels and webinars every weekend. And if you're interested in any of our future events um, we will host, you can go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Um, at Millie underscore group for any updates, as well as check out our website. Um, so for today's panel, here is how it's going to look like. We have some questions prepared already, but again, you can always submit your own questions um, in the Q&A. And the first 45 minutes or so, we'll go through the pre-prepared questions. And then after that, we'll let our panelists answer any of the viewers' questions. And I encourage you all to ask any questions, whether they're general um, questions for each of the panelists or whether they're directed to a specific panelist, either is fine, just make sure you mention their name. And I'm sure that um, they would be more than willing to help you get your answer. And today we're joined by three amazing panelists and we'll hear about them um, and their experiences. So we'll go ahead and get started with the introduction. So could each of the panelists please introduce themselves? So let us know of your name, the city you're currently in and are from, um, what are you studying? And then and one fun fact about yourself. And Maria, if you can get us started off, that would be great. Hello, my name is Maria Alejandra Castaño. I am from Bogota, Colombia, and I'm currently studying biochemistry and cell biology at Jacobs University, Bremen. And a fun fact about myself is that my favorite hobby is painting in oil, acrylic, and watercolor. Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name is Didi Sharma. I was born originally originally in Bangalore, India, um, and I'm currently studying in Munich, Germany, at uh, the Technical University of Munich, otherwise known as TUM. And um, I study physics. And uh, a fun fact about myself is that I love reading, and English was my best subject in high school, even better than physics. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Bernardo Oliveira. I am from Brazil, originally from the city of Recife, but now I'm currently living in Bremen, Germany, where I just graduated from biochemistry and cell biology, also at Jacobs University. My, I'd say my fun fact would be that I love cooking. It's my passion, let's say. Wonderful. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves and wonderful fun facts. And we'll start off with the very first question about why you applied to Jakobs and then see why you applied to the Technical University of Munich. I applied to Jakobs University because after doing a lot of research in different parts of the world, in the United States, in uh, the UK, Europe in general, the most complete academic curriculum was at Jacobs. So that was my first decision due to the academic part. And then I got to know that I could live on campus and that I would live with people from over 100 nationalities. So it was very good for me as a cultural experience as well. Um, yeah, so I applied at TUM because it's a leading uh, university in Germany and all um, like over the world um, in the natural sciences and engineering departments. Uh, yeah, I did a lot of research as well. It ranks in like the top 30 and it's free because it's a public university in Germany. Um, so it was my dream university since ninth grade. Uh my application here simply started through a friend who, who did study here before and uh, recommended. And uh, I was very skeptical at first because I had never heard about the university. But, uh, you know, when you listen to a friend, you, you're kind of like, uh, sure, why not? Uh, and I'm glad I, I listened to her advice because uh, um, when I went to look into to the major, to, to what I'm studying right now, I'm really... Uh, excited. I was really excited at the time and really glad that I, I made this decision, actually. Wonderful, guys. Both universities sound great. And it's so great that Jacobs has such a diverse um, background of all students. So you get to really connect 
um, and also live on campus. So it's a perfect opportunity as um, a new year student coming in. And um, in regards to what you're currently studying at university, um, could you tell us what that is? And then just to remind the students again, and then um, how did you decide what you wanted to study in university? Was it maybe um, an internship that you did or volunteering experience that guided you to picking your degree? So I'm currently studying biochemistry and cell biology at Jacobs University. And I decided what I wanted to study when I was 14. And I had a lecture on Mendelian genetics at school. And then I just thought that that was what I wanted to learn deeper and to get to uh, know more about genetics, about microbiology, biochemistry, cell biology. and I did not do any internships or volunteering. It was just my biology teacher. She was really passionate about everything. And I just thought that it was something that I was good at and that I just wanted to research more and more every day. Um, I study physics. Uh... Yeah, I actually wasn't fully decided until the day that my confirmation letter came from the university. I actually applied to two different courses at TOM, um, and I was lucky enough to get accepted into both. So when it just came down to picking between both courses, I just thought back on my experience in high school and my school was very open with their students and basically I was allowed to enter our labs at any time I wanted to I would just open up cabinets and just try and figure out my way around the class um, and that really piqued my interest because not only uh, when you study physics at school it's very um, like just words on a paper but when you really get to know what happens behind the scenes and how um, not only it's learned, but how it's taught, it get it's very interesting, and that's what interested me into studying it further. As for me, actually, my my decision about my major, I'm studying also like Maria, uh, biochemistry and cell biology. That's what I just graduated from, and uh, uh, my choice regarding my major wasn't really planned out as you would think. Uh, in high school, my my greatest, let's say, dream or, or ambition was to become a medical doctor and to study medicine in the U.S. Uh, but uh, I decided to, to come here by the reasons I already said. Plus, I received scholarships and uh, I'm also an European citizen. So for me, it was quite easy to, to, to come here. Uh, and um, in the U.S., if you don't know, you have to do a, a, a pre-med four years until you can get into medical school so in my mind I, I, I thought well great then I, I might as well choose something related to science which I love and therefore I chose biochemistry and cell biology which overwhelmed me with some uh, scientific goodness that that it was quite nice Wonderful. Thank you so much. And it's wonderful that all of you are enjoying your degrees. And then, um, as you said, you graduated and are now going on to the next step and enjoyed every part of it. And staying on the topic of your degree, what is your favorite part so far? Is it a, maybe a class that you're taking or um, something that you've had, kind of maybe had to written and submit? Um, so, yeah, what was your favorite part of your degree so far? So far, my favorite part is definitely the lab experience and the methods and techniques that we learn. I like that the curriculum is very up to date. So we're using new technologies. We're learning topics that are important in real life and that it's a way of learning that it doesn't stay on paper. You're actually working and you're actually using your knowledge. My favorite class so far is immunology because it's very interesting. I really love everything and the new techniques that come up as well as cell biology. Um, my favorite part of the degree is we basically at Tulmi, you have a professor mentorship program 
Um, so basically you get assigned to a professor um, that you get to choose and they take you on little trips uh, every now and then and give you insight into their research. Um, and yeah, they take you to, to their labs and just let you talk to other people that they're working with. And we also have a nuclear reactor on campus. So I'm hoping I get to take a trip into that as well. So just adding on a little bit to what Maria said, my, my favorite part is actually the hands-on, uh, quite uh, uh, real research that we, that we can work with. And also the working inside the labs, for example, since my second year in, in studies, I started being a teaching assistant. I was, as a matter of fact, uh, teaching Maria. And then we actually worked together, mentoring the other students. And that was uh, uh, great. But also, as I said, the, the real research. And by that, I mean working in real science, in real research uh, uh, with current topics, as I can tell you an example of my own. Um, where my thesis was studying the effects of, of the, of the uh, COVID-19 in uh, nerve cells. And uh, we could actually work in the lab with these cells and, and proceed on with that. So that was definitely my favorite part. Wonderful. It's great that um, the university is like, keeping up to date with current events to ensure that the students are learning um, not only previous stuff, but also stuff that's going on right now. And then it's also wonderful um, at the Technical University of Munich how you can have this great connection with the professor and go on like different trips. So it's really wonderful, both universities. And also um, your thesis sounds extremely interesting. Um, so um, on the topic of your classes and your degree, could you describe um, the typical structure of your lectures and seminars and um, how many you had per week? And then within like those classes of lectures, um, how many students was the average class like? So normally a lecture consists of a main topic and then subtopics that develop through the time. It, they normally last one hour and 15 minutes. And per week, I have six courses plus laboratory courses, adding up to 30 hours of lectures, I think around that. But I also study for quizzes, midterms. So that adds up more time. And the average student class size the first year is around 70 to 80 students because we have the health area that includes all the majors that are related to health. So for example, uh, chemistry as well as biochemistry and cell biology. And the second year, it becomes more specialized, only your major, and that is around 30 students. Um, yeah, it's pretty different. Around here, uh, we have, I have base, I have three different lectures, um, two times a week, uh, which are all around one hour thirty to one hour forty and five minutes. Um, then we have centralized study group sessions, which is basically the entire class, the entire uh, year together. And then you have smaller study groups. Um, led by students of higher semesters, so uh, for each subject every week as well. So that's six lecture hours and then six study group hours a week. Um, and then you're obviously studying outside. Um, and the average student class, like the average, oh geez, it's like 250 people in a lecture. Um, but it dwindles down by by like in later semesters, um, and we and the centralized sessions, like I said, has almost the entire class in it. But the study groups are around six to ten people. Uh, just to to add to what Maria already said, uh, on top of all these lectures, we also have uh, something similar to to Munich, I would say, uh, where we would have tutorials. Uh, provided by teaching assistants from the courses that uh, would allow us to to answer questions to to uh, work on class problems together and uh, and whatnot 
Um, on top of that, uh, we would also, again, have the, these lab courses and the classes somehow they they different in style depending on the professor i had classes more lecture style but also in my third years i had lectures more on the seminar style where uh we would all together participate uh once in a while to to present uh our own material and our own findings let's say Wonderful. Um, as a follow-up question to kind of the relationship um, between the teachers, um, well, the professors and the students, I know City mentioned this earlier, but if you guys could kind of discuss more about the relationship between the professor and the students, is there um, like office hours for the students to go to, or do you have to set that up personally with the um, professor? So email them and then do they happen in person or um, over Zoom and what it is like to just get a hold of them. So is there a good like student um, to professor relationship or is it a bit on the tougher side? At Jacobs, you get assigned an academic advisor who is a professor of your major, and it's the person that's going to be helping you. It is, it actually depends the office hours. There are office hours for each class, but it depends on the professor. So some of the professors have assigned certain times where you can go to their office, you can talk to them, or you have to send an email before. It actually depends, but the relationship with the professors is really good because all of the professors know your name, know who you are, know what you're doing, know what are your strengths, your weaknesses, and they are very supportive and they're always there for you. So since we are so few people, it is personalized and you feel like you can actually talk to them and that you can actually get help in any case that you need it. Um, yeah, it's a little different here because we're so many people, uh, but I, I mean, professors are always open to questions. If you want to catch them at the end of a lecture, that's always allowed. Um, we have obviously the mentorship program. So you have a professor who is open for questions. If you have questions about where your studies are going or whatnot, um, there's enough uh, opportunities to ask them like I said, for help on your studies. But um, we also have a Dean of Students uh, and he's very open, at least the physics one. He's very, he's very open and there's no office hours for him. He, if, he's like, if my door is open, you're, will, like, you're free to come in and talk. Um, so yeah, like it's open. It's just, you just have to take the initiative to actually do it, which is, we can be difficult if you're in such a like weird environment with so many people. Uh, in, in general, it's uh, quite similar as in uh, professors are generally very open in our small university, Jacobs, right? Um, it, it becomes easier, let's say. Uh, I would just add something more specific. I would say it's, it's quite of a misunderstanding that we think that we can be open with any professor and just they are also people right so it's important that we match in some terms i have some professors which i just go to their office to hang out and drink coffee i have other professors which i've asked them help in german presentations for example uh but i have others which i have no interest or or nothing to to speak to or you get what i mean so it really depends on, on who do you match with. And I guess uh, uh, it's much more than them offering an office hour and more of uh, you connecting to, to their personality and yours, I guess. Wonderful, thank you for sharing the like two sides to each university um, where you have more connections with professors at Jacobs, but then you also have to reach out to them and kind of see who you connect with. And then at Zoom, like that there's this um, one head, um, like Dean, who you can go to to discuss anything. But then again, you 
have to um, kind of stand up and take the initiative yourself. So it can be scary, but it has to be done at one point to get to know the university better other than if you have any other questions, you already have that kind of connection. So thank you for sharing that. And um, still on the topic of all of your classes, um, can you tell us how your courses are assessed? So um, if there are midterms and finals plus different assignments throughout the year, and then um, at the end of the year, um, so when you get all your grades sent out, is it the midterm that matters the most, the final, or is it a mix of everything? Um, and yeah. At Jacobs, the final exam represents 100% of the grade but you can have quizzes and midterms, depending on the professor, that allow you to get bonus points for the final exam. So when you get the grades at the end of the semester, you only get the final exam grade and the bonus points that you have earned. Normally we have four quizzes um, per course and they can give you a maximum of 10% improving your final grade. But if your final exam is better than the overall of your quizzes, then the final exam is the final grade. Um, yeah, it's the same here. You have semester exams. Um, so we have two semesters per year. And when you have the semester exams, those are 100% of your grades. You get like one practice test in the bit in the middle um but that differs like widely across subjects um yeah so the the Norton bonus and it actually only helps you like a little bit there's really not um any different way to improve your grade other than do really well at the end uh this is definitely not a coincidence of our universities in general Universities in Germany is one exam per subject, 100%. Uh, this is something new that that uh, that the German the German government uh, proposed. But um, and again, it very varies a lot regarding professors on how they will treat that. There are professors who are like, okay, 100% final exam, that's it. Which these are probably the ones you wouldn't reach out to anyway. So that's fine but there are those who understand our situation and will do quizzes or extra work to to guarantee us some some not extra points but just an extra effort i would say yeah Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it is definitely different at every university worldwide, and it's kind of scary that you have this one exam that determines your whole grade um, for the course, but it is obviously doable um, as all the students are doing this and committing to this. Um, and we'll switch topics from your classes and um, lectures and move on to what the campus is like. So there might be a bit of a um, layover between um, Marianne and um, Bernardo between the campus since they um, are at the same university but um yeah just describe um kind of what the atmosphere is like if there's libraries or um you have to go kind of to a public library to study if you prefer that um and if there are like facilities like sport um centers or just um maybe restaurants on campus as well so cover the um student life on campus so i would describe life on campus as lively, welcoming, and cozy. Because on campus, we have the library, we have a gym, we have tennis court, we have the swimming pool across, we have the labs are in the campus of the university, as well as the buildings where the um, classes happen. And we also have surveys in each college, and there are four colleges. You choose your college according to your personality. So each college has uh, certain characteristics of people that want to live there. So, for example, I live in Mercator and it is known to be an artsy college. So people that like painting, poetry, reading would want to live there. There are other colleges, as Bernardo will tell later, like Nordmetal, where the people that like to study a lot are, or Krupp, where people that like sports so it is very nice because it makes it easier for you to find people that have the same hobbies as you, for example. And 
since you live with people from over 120 countries, it is really nice to get to know different cultures every day. Um, yeah, so because TUM is a public university, it's huge um, and it's spread all over Germany. Um, yeah, we have a city campus in Munich, we have Fleising, Regensburg, it's just, it's just a lot. Um, I study at the Garching campus, which is in like a removed part of Munich, and it's the biggest campus um, of TUM. Uh, yeah, so it's beautiful. It's very green. Um, there's obviously places to play football and different different sports. Um, the buildings are relatively new. We have there's a a library, like a subject specific library for every department, which is present in their own buildings. Um, and yeah, they're very nice. Uh, you you can just go in and ask them for a book and they'll have it for you in like a week or two. Um, there's a lot of options for food. There's a great not there's a great cafeteria which is uh, which has like many different options every day. But there's also the restaurants if you want to treat yourself. Um, so burgers, whatever you want. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's great. Um, there's a lot of options for food and drinking and just hanging out with your friends if you're not studying. So as Maria started saying, uh, the campus at, at Jacobs is very green, very cozy and small at the same time uh, with uh, spaces for you to lie down in, in a nice summer day uh, with a book or something or even to, to play some rugby, to play some, some football around uh, a big gym. Uh, if you if you want to work out, if you want to, to play some volleyball or whatnot, uh, the the four residential colleges colleges each of them have uh, their own uh, serveries and their own cafeteria, so uh, you're pretty much set for a cold winter day or something. Uh, but the place that the students love the most, and that's essential when you have to wake up at. 8 a.m. to go to a lecture in winter when it's all dark. It's the coffee bar. Inside the library, there's a this tiny coffee bar where we can just go there and get the morning coffee that we all need. And uh, I think that's the favorite place that the students would say. Perfect, thank you so much. The campuses sound lovely and um, a morning coffee for all the students is especially needed, especially during exam times, I'm sure. And um, so on campus, it's great, but what is it like living in Germany overall? If you visited other cities, maybe with friends or if the school organizes some events for you to go ahead and branch out um, or specifically what it's like living in your town and um, what are your favorite places to go to? And is it more of a student city or is it more um, kind of of a mixed city with a bunch of different families, maybe old people as well? So what is um, your city like? And then what is it like living in Germany overall if you've um, visited other places as well? For me, living in Germany is magical. You have the freedom to be yourself, to travel a lot. I have been to Hamburg, which is very close to Bremen, and to Berlin as well. Uh, and it has definitely been the best time of my life. My favorite place to go, it's very close to the university, it's called Knups Park. And uh, Bremen is actually a student city. So it's very lively. The city center is beautiful. There are tiny streets. There is a lot of culture and there's always something to do. Everything is closed. So if you need to go to the supermarket or if you want to go to the cinema or if you just want to hang out in or yes, like in the city center, everything is closed and um, I really love to live in Bremen. Yeah, uh, same. I love Germany. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Everything works like clockwork here. It's safe. It's clean. Um, the benefits are incredible for students. Like the things you can do with a student card in Germany, it's incredible. Um, and I mean, I live in Munich, which is the capital of Bavaria, the state. So it's not 
entirely a student city, but because TUM and there's also a different university, LMU, these two public universities are so big and they're so widespread. It's almost like living in a student city. Um, basically where I lived, this entire building was just erected for students to uh, come and stay here. So it's a great, it's, it's a great city, honestly. Um, don't expect anything to be open after eight. That's Bavaria for you. I don't know what it's like in Bremen, but in Bavaria, after eight, nothing's open. Uh, so yeah, you might starve to death if you don't buy food before eight. Yeah, Germany honestly is a it's a it's a really nice place to live. But and they said already what what is nice about Germany. But the thing that I hate the most about living here is that everything is closed on Sunday. I mean, who in the right mind would think that that was a good idea? Honestly. But yeah, that's that's the first thing. Uh, very punctual, except for the trains, but that's another issue. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, Bremen is a is a wonderful city. I mean, Maria already talked about it, and uh, it's a very, very cozy and uh, it's its own state, so it's pretty long and, and big. Um, and my, I'd say my favorite place in, place in in Bremen is the the riverside along along the the street called Schlachte, where uh, there are many restaurants and it's so pretty at night. There are street lights and uh, it's a nice place for to get some food or drink. Uh, it's it's lovely, honestly. Perfect. Both cities are wonderful. And I was also going to mention, if none of you did, that everything was closed on Sundays, just like things getting closed at 8 a.m. Um, when I was living in Frankfurt, definitely it was a hassle um, and unfortunate when you're you're there for the first week and you need to go somewhere on Sunday and everything's closed. You're kind of shocked. But yeah, thanks so much for putting that out to the students. And um, this was mentioned um, by you, City, like about the student discounts. So on the topic of like student discounts, are you getting them at stores, um, at supermarkets, um, on buses, trains, um, trams? So what is it like um, being a student with kind of money wise? Like, do you get a lot of benefits or is it a bit on the tougher side and there aren't many benefits? At Jacobs, we have the semester ticket that allows us to travel basically anywhere for free. We can take regional trains up to, I don't know how many kilometers, but it's a far distance. And that allows you to get to know a lot of places. And on the other side, I have gotten discounts, for example, on my laptop and because I'm a student in Germany and there's like this web page. I don't really remember the name, but it is, you just put your like Jacobs University credentials and then it allowed me to get my laptop for cheaper, which is really nice. And also parting is good as being a, as when you're a student because clubs have a student nights where you don't have to pay to get in. So that's really nice because I really like to go out with my friends. Um, yeah, just adding on to that, we also have the semester ticket here in Munich. Um, you do have to pay like 200 euros, but that's just for the entire semester. Um, and you're using the U-Bahn and the trams so much. It doesn't, it just makes sense. And it's very cheap in comparison to what you would actually have to pay. Um, you, like I don't like I used my student ID when I went on a trip to Croatia to get into like nature parks for for much cheaper. Um, so yeah, like really abuse your abuse your student ID because it just gets you into so many things, clubs, uh, like different parks, everything. Everything is much much cheaper. I mean, uh, I had the opportunity to to live in, in in Berlin for for a while during internship, and the student ID it's amazing if you if you like museums or so. In Berlin, it, it it's I mean there is a place called Museum Island, so you get the idea, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's wonderful to have the the opportunity uh, to go into places where. I mean, you're learning, right? You're a student. You you are you're learning as you're going to a museum and everything. And uh, having that to be cheaper and all, 
it's a uh, it's it's really nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that aspect and being able to get these semester tickets that really help you without having like the hassle of buying a ticket for uh, the u bond comes. And um, so a little bit of a different topic, still about kind of student life, but can you explain what your accommodation was like in your first year? So um, whether that being in halls or if you had to find your own apartment, and then also can you tell us uh, what it was like switching from from your first year, so from um, just when you got there up until your second year. So did the university help you? Did you get to stay on campus? Did you um, have to like move in with friends into a, in a different apartment and what the transition was like? So on my first year, I decided to live in College Nord Metal, which is where the people that like to study live. And I, um, loved it it was really really nice but I am a very social person so I wanted to try a different college the next year it was very very easy for me the transition because um, since we live on campus and you get guaranteed that on the first year you're gonna live on campus I didn't have to worry about finding an apartment worry about uh, finding flight flatmates to live with I lived with a roommate from Hong Kong my first year, and then I met my best friends, and then I lived with them from Dubai and from Albania for my second year. It was very easy to move in. It's just like a two-minute walk from North Metal to Mercator in the same in the same college, so that made it a very very easy and even better that I could live with my best friends. Um, yeah, no, it's completely different here because it's a public university, so they're not offering you any kind of accommodation. Uh, that's not their problem. So, yeah, you really have to um, you have to look for your own apartments. There is a students' association um, in Munich, the Studentenwerk. Um, but they don't really have any options unless you're applying for an apartment six semesters in advance. Um, so it's it's just it's up to you. Um, yeah, you're looking for it for yourself. Uh, I had similar experience to to Maria, uh, just a tad different, I'd say. Uh, I stayed in, in my own college for my whole three years, uh, which also was not usual. Um, in the first year, I, I shared again a room with uh, with a roommate, which was we worked out quite well. Um, then I had a chance to, to apply on my second year for a single room, which, uh, was also great. Uh, uh, you have your own bathroom and everything. So, so that was perfect. Uh, on your way through a third year, however, usually many students are going to semester abroad or to coming back from them. And, uh, that means that campus accommodation becomes difficult. And what means is that many students on that year will have to leave and find an apartment on their own in Bremen. Uh, that was the case for, for my, um, my class of, of 2022, I guess. And um, many of my friends had to, to leave campus to live uh, outside. Luckily, I applied to be, again, just as the same I, I did the, year, the previous year, to be a mentor for the incoming students. And therefore, that allowed me to stay uh, in a single room on campus once more. So that worked out perfectly. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. And in your first year, still on the same topic, so um, living on campus, was accommodation catered or self-catered? So um, you guys mentioned that there were um, different um, halls in each of the accommodations, um, so the cafeterias. And did those have like different options suitable for like different dietary um, requirements? And then if it was self-catered, uh, how many people did you share like a kitchen with? So uh, accommodation is catered because there are servers in each college. And um, now we have so many options. There is um, salad bar, 
there is bread bar, there is like uh, all types of desserts, there's different types of hams, cheese, and there are also the um, dishes that are cooked right there. And they also have vegan options, vegetarian, normal. So there is everything you want. And there are certain times. So from 7.30 to 9.30, you can have a um, breakfast. Then from 12 to 2, you can have lunch. And from 6 to 8, you have dinner. In those times, you eat and buy whatever you want. We have the campus card, which we used to pay. So it is the meal plan you pay for in your tuition, like in your tuition, like living expensive, expenses. And it gets a refill with 12 euros every day. So if I decide that for an entire week, I'm just going to cook because each college in each floor has a kitchen and I don't want to use my campus card money, then by the end of the week, I'm going to have 12 times five and then I can buy food for the next day and like that. So it is really good. You don't have to worry about food at all. And in the case that you don't have any money, it's fine because in your campus card, you will you will have money. And if you don't, then you just wait one day and then the next day you're going to have money again. So that's really good because now I'm doing my internship in Spain. I'm living alone and I'm doing everything alone. And then I noticed how hard it was to arrive from work after being in the lab the entire day and thinking of cooking. But at university, since we have the surgeries and everything, now I appreciate it more <laughs> that when I come back for my last year, I will not have to worry about coming back and cooking. I love to cook, but every day it becomes kind of a lot or going out as well. So it is really nice. Yeah, it doesn't really apply to me. It depends on where you live. Um, but I agree with the thing coming back from, I mean, I have to come back from uni every day and cook, so it can get a little, it, it gets on your nerves after a while. <laughs> yeah. So I really took advantage of, of the fact that there are kitchens provided. Actually, I, I had a cooktop inside my room uh, throughout these three years, which was kind of illegal, but let's move on um and it allowed me to cook in in my room all the time uh to invite friends or or something like that to uh cook together so it was quite nice uh talking a little bit more about the the varieties that maria was saying there are even halal options uh vegan options and vegetarian options during uh ramadan they they provide food late at night uh if you signed up and then you get food late at night uh so you can also eat well in during Ramadan yeah so wonderful that is actually extremely helpful to the students who are fasting um, away from family maybe for the first time so um, if they aren't very up for cooking it's great that the university is helping and providing that option um, and on the topic of like um, just university overall what um, do you wish that your university would have done differently? And then what is one thing that your university has done perfectly and you hope they never change this in the next few years? Honestly, I fully believe that everything my university has done was perfectly well done because uh, I am from Colombia and getting a student visa for me was very very difficult especially because I graduated in 2020 right when the pandemic started and the embassy of Germany in Colombia said they were not going to give any student visas for that year but my university contacted the embassy of Germany in Colombia so that I could get my documents I was supposed to arrive in August but since because of all of these issues I ended up arriving in November with an eight hour difference, having online classes. So I would literally wake up in the middle of the night at 1 a.m. and have classes until 8 or 9 a.m. of the next day while being at, in Colombia. So the help I got from the university was incredible. They emailed 
almost every week the embassy so that I could get my visa, so that I could arrive. And having the academic advisor, we also have uh, resident mentors in each college that are more part of your personal life. Like they know, uh, well, you live in the college. So if you have any types of situations, you can go to them. We also have psychological counselors at the university. So if you're feeling like you need some help, like you need to talk to someone, because of course we're far away from home and sometimes it can be difficult, you just send an email and you get a session with a professional psychological counselor in no time the next day, if that's what you need and if that's what you want. So honestly, it has been really, really nice. And I think everything is very well structured and assures that students that travel from everywhere in the world to study in Germany feel at home. Um, something that I love about this university, um, among many things, but my favorite thing is how much help we get in our studies, because Tom, it's, it's a highly academic and a highly competitive environment. Um, there are people that are it's you're you're competing with so many people to get to the top of whatever you want to do but the university never makes it feel like that you kind of have to take a step back to realize that you are doing this but the university never puts that pressure on you that you are competing against people that are maybe much smarter than you are um at least in my case so um yeah like there's a lot of help to make sure that you're getting through your studies and getting through your through the academic side of your life well. Um, if there's anything that I wish would have been done differently, would maybe be something that is offered at um, Jacobs, which is great, is the psychological help. Because, and I understand because there's like 300 people here, how many, how many people can you offer that kind of help to? But um, I think just trying to get that help from anyone, like I like I said before, it's really difficult because you have to take the initiative. And when you're under stress and when you're going through the, those emotions of like maybe sit like homesickness or just not feeling very well psychologically, it's very hard to take that initiative, step forward and ask for help um, from from like in between so many people. So yeah, that. Yeah, the, the perspectives are quite different, actually, right? Because uh, for me, I think uh, one of the things that the university did quite well was the intercultural inter integration somehow. I mean, there are 120 some countries being represented on campus in the university, counting, of course, uh, PhD students and master's students and whatnot, uh, staff and all of that. But how do you put all of these people from different uh, countries, different languages, different uh, values and, and backgrounds together uh, and try to make a community out of it, right? So it's, it's not that simple. Uh, so I actually quite like the programs of, of having, of training. I myself was trained as a, as a cultural trainer in the university to, to, uh, uh, to have that, uh, um, make sure that this, this is kept in the university throughout the years. That was pretty good. Uh, I would say if it was something that they do inside very well, it's not something that they do outside very well in terms of the integration beyond the campus and into Bremen itself. I would say that this is the part that still lacks the university push uh, and it comes more of, of the student's interest, which I think it's missing out on, on the a great uh, opportunity, let's say, right? That the, to integrate ourselves in inside Germany, in the culture, in the the life in Bremen in general, right? So I would put these two together. Wonderful. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of your experiences. We'll move on to the last two questions, which are two student questions. And the first one is, um, so both of these are directed to all of you guys. Um, the first question is, do you have to know German? Um, is yes, is B2 enough? 
So actually, I arrived to Germany without knowing any German. I took two months or three months of German before uh, arriving to Germany, which is not even A1. So you don't have to know German if you go to Jacobs University because you are going to learn at university. You have German class and then you have it mandatory for the first two years. The third year, you choose if you want to have German or not. So you don't have to know German to, to arrive to Jacobs. Um, yeah, at the two, you need German. Uh, you need German skills for most of the courses that you take. Um, there are specific modules that are offered in English, but that's not enough to get you through your course. Um, so a B2 was enough, uh, not anymore. Now you need, depending on which um, certificate you're getting, I know for the, if you're taking, if you're getting a Goethe certificate, you need a C2 now. And if you are taking a Telk, then you need a C1 Hochschule. Um, so yeah, you need German, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Maria already said for Jacobs, we don't need German. Uh, the difference is that one is a private university, right? The others are public universities. And uh, in general, uh, as already mentioned, you have to speak German if you're going to a German university for bachelor's studies, period. And German at a German level. Uh, and why I say that, for, if you take, for example, another test that is a DAF test, uh, it's a test consisting on different categories, let's say speaking, reading, writing, listening, uh, and each of them is out of five. You would have to take a straight four in every one of them to have this as a minimum grade to be accepted, let's say. Uh, but in terms of uh, our university in Jacobs uh, that we don't have to, my advice is do it. You're not gonna lose anything from learning German, do it. It's not an option, let's say, for me at least, it's not an option, it's a must, you know? Uh, I would add that. Uh, can I just add really quick? Um, Germany is like, yeah, people speak English here, but if you wanna live here and if you wanna live here comfortably, you should just know German because there's very few people that are gonna help you out in life if you're just speaking English here. So, I mean, I think with the Jacobs as well, if you're coming here, take German and learn it and learn it well, because it's just gonna help you so much in life. And I think it's even a little bit outrageous of us to just come, hey, hello, I'm here, new, can you help me? All in, all in English and not even have the slight uh, politeness even to, you know, at least try to learn the language. They're hosting us. So we might as well adjust, yeah. Yeah, that's the reason why I started learning German like three months before going to Germany. And I wish I would have started earlier, but at my school, it was kind of difficult to get access to no German. And definitely when I arrived to Germany in the middle of the winter and no, no one was there to actually help me. It was very difficult in the beginning to go out of the campus, for example, even to the supermarket. I couldn't find milk, let's say, and I just could not like ask for help. So that made me want to learn more and dedicate more time to learn German, which I wish I would have done before. So if you're planning on coming to Germany, you really have to learn German like it is a must as Bernardo said and it is a great idea because German is a very nice language to know as well so wonderful thank you so much for your responses and lastly uh, before we close off the panel um, we have one more student question asking are there any extracurricular activities you would recommend for students to take in high school that would help you stand out on your application so the application at Jacobs University is taking into account who you are as a person, as well as the academic part. 
but they really look at your hobbies. They really look at who you are, not just the numbers, but how you're going to contribute to an international campus. So if you really love doing something, you should do it. If you love to paint and you go to a painting school, you add it in your application. But as well, if you want to study, for example, biochemistry and cell biology, it is nice if you have participated in the science fair, if you go to math clubs, if you do these types of things. Because at university, we have over 50 clubs and you can get into them. Currently, I am part of the Society of Life Sciences and Chemistry, which I was with, with Bernardo as well. And it is very nice because we host faculty parties so that the students can get in touch with the professors. We do CV seminars so that you can know how to make your CV when you're applying for an internship, which is mandatory at the Jacobs University for graduation. We also do internship seminars where uh, the students that have already done it, they explain their experience, how did they apply, how was it to live in a different country or in Germany during their internship. So I suggest that you really do something. If you love to do a sport, you should do it because then when you arrive to Jacobs, you're going to find a place. And if you don't find it, then you can make it because you can create new clubs and you can get funding, you can get any type of help that you need to start your passion, you can do it. So that's really nice. I also love to paint, as I have said. So I was part of the Art Fest exhibition as the um, organizer part of the event in the marketing area. So there is anything that you want to do, you can do it, but make sure that you start beforehand and that you find a place where you can do it and you can talk about it. Um, applying to TUM is highly numerical. Uh, unfortunately, you have to have the grades. Uh, yeah, but the thing is you do have to submit a CV with your application. So in your CV or as a in German Lebenslauf, they will look at your um, voluntary work and like what kind of internships you've done in the past, but it's not a deciding factor if you get in or not. You just need to have, um, even in the CV, they're just looking if you've done 12 years of uh, education beforehand. Um, so yeah, like to get into Tom, you don't really have to do anything. I would still recommend that you do because there are incredible, incredible groups here on campus. Um, and can, like, they're always looking for new people. And if you've had any kind of prior experiences, then you'll definitely find a better footing here on campus. Um, like we have a we have a group that participated in the not a boring competition, the Elon Musk competition, and they won last year. So there's a lot of different opportunities on campus. Um, they don't look at it in your application, but it's definitely something I would recommend to do anyway. Uh, since both of you guys already mentioned in your here application in Germany and, and in general, like uh, I won't mention that, but I would say something that uh, I think, at least for me, it's quite important that honestly, don't do something if it's just for your CV. It's not it's not worth it. It's not worth it. If it's just for your CV, just to put it there, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your energy, you're wasting the same energy that you could be putting in something that you'd like, that would be also worth putting in a CV. I'm not saying that you shouldn't uh, uh, try to get out of your comfort zone for a CV plus, let's say. But what I'm saying is that sometimes it's, it's worth it already pursuing the, the uh, how do you call that, the, the qualities and the, the um, talents, let's say, that we already have and trying to make that into something into something great, let's say. Yeah. yeah, I think something like a common misconception is just because you're studying something, um, just because you want your CV to look a certain way does not mean you have to give up on all your other passions and all your other interests. Like, um, I think it's a common misconception when you're studying something that's sci scientific or in the STEM area of life, people think you have to just give up every other 
interests that you've ever had, but just on like honestly just making sure that you're still passionate about anything about life especially when uni gets very tough is very important so it allows you to stay healthy um throughout your journey and i think as an encouragement also if you didn't have time in high school to to pursue the things you you wanted there's still time like uh i love to sing and uh in during high school i i didn't if I wasn't even encouraged to do anything like that. But um, in university, I joined the choir and I'm part of the choir till now. And it's amazing. I love it. You know what I mean? So just try to find yourself in that sense. Wonderful, guys. Um, unfortunately, we are at the end of our time. Um, but thank you so much to all of our panelists for spending their time today and giving wonderful insight um, into German University, so Jakobs and the Technical University of Munich. Um, so discussing what the key highlights are as well as some things to watch out for. So thank you for being so open and honest with our students. And also thank you to the viewers. I'm sure you can all agree that our amazing panelists have done a fantastic job and provided some crucial information um, around your next steps. And once again, if you need any help with university and career guidance, do check out our website and Instagram. You can um, contact all of our panelists via LinkedIn as well to get um, help with any of the questions you may have. And thank you so much once again and